That was a demonstration of one of the downsides of electricity. It's quite happy to flow through the human body if the opportunity presents itself. Of course, that demonstration you saw was a phony, because letting your body conduct electricity can cause death, especially if its path crosses your heart. And the violent spasms that are usually associated with electric shock are due to the fact that your body uses minute electric currents of its own to control its muscles. Electricity requires a circuit to flow in, and it's quite happy to flow in several circuits at once if the opportunity presents itself. So for electricity to flow in, say, the heating elements of a toaster, it has to travel from the transformer on the pole through the house's main fuse or breaker, a branch fuse or breaker, one prong of the plug, the switch inside the toaster, the heating element, the other prong of the plug, and back through another bunch of connections all the way back to the transformer on the pole. Now, house current is 60 cycle alternating current, so every 120th of a second, it turns around and goes in the other direction. But as far as the toaster and electrocuting yourself are concerned, the fact that it's AC is a red herring. Now, at any place in the circuit, it's theoretically safe for me to touch it with my finger. The electricity won't flow through me because it has nowhere to complete the circuit. Ha! Go ahead and touch it. But first, I gotta tell you about a little concept called ground. One side of the house wiring is grounded. And grounding is the physical connection of one end of the circuit to the earth. In most houses, the grounding is done to a metal water supply pipe. And that pipe runs underground and all that nice electrically conductive moist dirt. A house in the country with plastic plumbing will have a 10 foot metal rod driven into the earth for its ground. This makes damp concrete floors, water taps, metal sinks, and even damp grass one part of the household wiring circuit. The side of the circuit that isn't tied to ground is called live or hot. If you touch it, you'll find out why. The grounding business means that we have an excellent chance of completing an electrical circuit if we encounter a live wire. One of the ways invented to keep us from encountering live wires is the safety ground. A third wire in the house wiring does nothing but connect all of the exposed metal parts in the system to ground. A third prong on the plug extends that connection to the metal parts of the appliance. If a live wire touches a metal part, the fuse or breaker blows. This prevents the exposed parts from ever becoming live by accident. This is the stupidest thing ever invented. It's called a polarized plug and has one blade wider than the other. In a world with no war, famine, disease, or humans, it would be effective. A world suited to the polarized plug would also be devoid of old houses, extension cords, and all the Uncle Harrys who miswire their relatives' outlets. Most people end up swearing at polarized plugs and figure out ingenious ways to defeat them. Now, you might be wondering where fuses fit into all of this. Fuses are designed to prevent the wires in your walls from bursting into flame. Unfortunately, it doesn't take much current to kill a human. By a crude calculation, the average 15 amp fuse will pass enough current to electrocute 6,250 humans simultaneously. The same can be said of the 15 amp circuit breaker if you have those instead of fuses. This is a ground fault circuit interrupter. It's a truly nifty advance in the science of anti-electrocution. The GFCI keeps track of all the current in its circuit. And if even a tiny amount isn't accounted for, it trips too off. Here's how it works. Your basic miniature electronics inside the unit keeps track of the exact amount of current in both prongs of the plug. At any instant, the current flowing out of one prong to, say, an electric lawnmower should be equal to the current flowing back into the other prong. The actual amount isn't important, but just so long as both sides are equal. Now, imagine what happens in the worst case. This lawnmower here develops a fault that puts a human in contact with a live wire. Some current flows from the hot side of the circuit through the human's feet into the damp grass back to the ground. A small amount of excess current leaves the GFCI via the hot prong, but doesn't return via the other side. It's getting back to ground through the grass. The GFCI detects this small discrepancy and trips. Now, it's important to note that the GFCI didn't limit the current to the human. It limited the amount of time that the human was exposed. So, while the GFCI can save a life by shutting down the circuit, it's not a good idea to demonstrate this to your friends too often. 
Now, I have enough experience to know that this item will cause a few people to write in. I have one of those GFCI things you like so much, and all it does is keep tripping while I'm mowing the lawn. I hate it, and you are stupid. If a GFCI keeps tripping on you, listen carefully. There's something wrong. Find the problem and get it fixed. Then you can write me a nasty letter about something else. If you live in a fairly new house, you probably have a GFCI in the bathroom and one on the outdoor outlet. And GFCIs can be added to any wiring. Remember, you don't need a great connection to get a bad shock. A concrete floor with a normal amount of humidity is enough for bare feet. Really, everybody should have GFCIs in the danger locations. Well, everybody maybe except the person who thought up the polarized plug. That person deserves to be electrocuted.